I dreamed I was adopted by a mother. She let me stay up and watch all my favorite TV shows. She never fed me liver and Brussels sprouts. <laughs> you know, Amy, it's such a remarkable coincidence. I, too, had a nightmare. Really? Yes, nine years ago. You. Good night. <laughs> this video is brought to you by Patreon. Patreon. Love knows no borders. Welcome to Knickknack Sample Platter, where we break chronology to look at a single episode of a Nickelodeon show. There is a challenge to critically discussing comedy, especially decades-old comedy being viewed from a modern lens. The idea that a joke may not have aged well will often result in some nasty line-in-the-sand scream fest in the comments or on Twitter. Oh, you SJWs just want to hashtag cancel culture, blah blah blah. And I kind of get it, because if you once laughed at a joke that is now being discussed as insensitive and cruel, it feels as though it's a value judgment on you, even if it's been decades since you laughed at it. I laughed at that joke, and this person says the joke is bad, so they must be saying I am bad. I'm not bad, screw you. These discussions are not only usually very toxic, but they deny us the more interesting conversation of the larger context of a piece of comedy and why one might challenge it today, or in fact, challenge it when it was new. Which brings us to today's subject, the only episode of You Can't Do That on Television to be banned on Nickelodeon. Adoption is the second episode of the eighth season of You Can't Do That on Television, premiering sometime in 1987 and reportedly only airing once or twice before the channel removed it from rotation. Each episode of You Can't Do That on Television takes a theme, like school, romance, money, or yes, adoption, and runs them through a series of reoccurring segments, like the disgusting eatery of Barth's Burgery. I uh, once adopted a, a bunch of kids. Uh-oh. What happened to them? Where are they now? Who do you think's in the burgers? Uh, I heard that. The dysfunctional home life of the preverts. But why did you adopt me? I mean, why don't you just go to the Humane Society and adopt a dog? Oh, well, you see, dear, the Humane Society charges $35 to adopt a dog. The orphanage doesn't charge anything at all. So you see, dog, a uh, dog. You were really a much better value. <laughs> and the quite lethal firing squad. Well, you wouldn't shoot a poor little orphan, would you? Of course I would not shoot a poor little orphan. Hey, amigos! No! Uh, I have a big heart. Guess what, then? What? I am an orphan. <laughs> I know that. We know that, eh, amigos? Sure we know that. Sure, sure. Well, so does that mean you're not going to shoot me? Oh, come on. You've got a heart. You remember. <laughs> holy, holy. You are not a poor little orphan. When your parents died, they left you lots of money. Oh, really? You are a very rich little orphan. <laughs> Ready? Aim. In each episode, the segments are framed around an ongoing narrative where the cast as themselves play out a little scenario related to the day's themes. In this case, Vanessa and Doug realize they're a lot alike despite how much they hate each other, and they start to irrationally worry that they're actually siblings, and one or both of them were given up and adopted by another family. Hello? Hi, I'd like to speak to my mother, please. Mrs. Lindor. Yes, I'm her daughter. No, I haven't just been adopted recently. I hope I haven't been adopted at all. That's why I'm calling. I don't know if I'm her daughter. Jokes about adoption come in many forms in this episode. The least contentious is a spoof of Little Orphan Annie, called Little Orphan Andrea, where instead of a sweet, precious little orphan girl, you have a violent girl who loves to fight unprovoked. There are jokes about parents threatening to give up their kids to adoption if they don't behave, jokes about awful parents adopting children to fulfill an ulterior motive, or jokes about children just too unlovable to be adopted. Today's child is Vanessa. Vanessa can be a smiling, friendly girl if you approach her correctly. <laughs> Vanessa has few defects, apart from squinty eyes, crooked teeth, bad breath, and practically no chin at all. <laughs> if you would like to adopt Vanessa, call 555-KIDS. That's 555-KIDS. 
We'll even give you a paper bag to take her home in. And I think it's that last segment that might be the biggest problem here. But first, a disclaimer. I was not adopted. I was never in a foster care system. My parents are both still alive and haven't abandoned me. At least not yet. So these jokes are in no way applicable to me. If they're applicable to you, if you were adopted, I'm very interested in hearing your take on these things, and I'm especially interested on hearing what your take would have been if you heard these jokes when you were 6, 8, 12, you know, the demographic watching this show back in 1987. And actually, the episode makes a very similar disclaimer. Hi, and welcome to You Can't Do That on Television. Today's show is about adoption. It's written, directed, produced, and performed by people who know absolutely nothing about adoption. And of course, haven't bothered to find out, right? Well, so what else is new, right? I mean, isn't that the way it always is on the show? <laughs> well, actually, Adam, I think a lot of television is like that. Okay, does it matter? Well, I think this time it does matter, because some kids watching may be adopted, and they'll know what it's like. All right. Knock it off. Don't give away any trade secrets. Just get on with the show. Okay, okay, okay. We apologize in advance, but we know that you know this is all meant in fun. There. Yeah, I guess I did kind of underestimate the audience, thinking they have no sense of humor. Mm -hmm. You've got to have a sense of humor to watch this show, right? <laughs> well, something like that, yeah. Oh, oh, we'll get back to this. It's an interesting angle to discuss, because today adoption doesn't seem to be anywhere near the list of sensitive topics being debated in the field of comedy. Adoption, of course, covers a wide range of experiences, both good and bad, from pre-birth adoption agreements to a child having a bad foster care experience to, oh yeah, if you lived in Canada, then there was the 60s scoop where 20,000 First Nation children were forcibly taken from their families by the government and placed in white households, a program that created a great deal of harm and lasted until about the mid-80s. It ended probably not even a full year before this episode was filmed. And hey, what country is You Can't Do That on Television shot in anyway? You've probably heard about this concept in comedy called punching up versus punching down, which concerns where the cultural power of a joke is weighted. Basically... A joke against systems of power, be they politicians, the rich, the privileged majority, is a joke punching up, while a joke about the victims of systems of power, the underrepresented, the lower class, the oppressed minority, is a joke punching down. When a comedian makes fun of transgender people, they're making fun of a minority that is constantly struggling for basic human rights and recognitions. They're punching down. When a comedian makes fun of Donald Trump, they're making fun of one of the most stupidly powerful men in the world. They're punching up. But You Can't Do That on Television is a comedy show for children, so it's not concerned with the larger world of politics and social issues. For this show, the systems of power that you punch up against are the adult authority figures in your life. That's what makes You Can't Do That on Television feel so excitingly subversive. It's a show where parents are slobbish idiots, teachers are cruel taskmasters, Doctors are quacks, and school bus drivers are threats to your life. The show winks and goes, Man, grown-ups, am I right? What's their deal? But where is the punch aimed in these segments? Is it a joke about how parents looking to adopt can be petty? Or is it a joke making fun of the unwanted orphans? Would a kid in a foster situation who might feel insecure over being undesirable watch this and find it funny, or would it feed into their anxieties? To be fair, there are segments of the adoption episode that do punch up. Oh, this adult is too stupid to realize that adopting a kid is a lifetime commitment, and you can't just get a kid, have them do a bunch of chores, and take them back to the orphanage. What? What do you mean adoption is forever? Listen, this kid it looks like he's getting hungry. He's going to have to be fed. You get over here right away, you damn bureaucrat. Hey, listen, kid, what was your name again? Adam. Adam? Yeah, look, uh, they won't be here for another half hour. Why don't you up and clean the toilet? Then get your hands off my potato chips! Actually, Leslie saying damn might have had more to do with this episode getting banned than any of the actual jokes. So it's not a complete loss, but I do think a lot of the humor here misses the marks in ways that could upset kids in certain situations. And I think that disclaimer they make their attempt at lampshading makes it so much worse 
because it's an open admission that even they think they were crossing a line. Imagine that same kind of disclaimer about a different subject that you would punch down on, like race. Hey, we're about to tell you a bunch of jokes about black people. We're not black, and we did no research, but that's okay because we trust our black audience to have a sense of humor about themselves, which is another way of saying that if you don't like it, the problem is with you, not us. Of course that wouldn't fly, and I think the people behind the show knew that from the beginning. Jeffrey Darby, who in 1987 was no longer in the writing team but was still serving as executive producer, reflected the disclaimer's hesitations years later. I think the adoption show went too far. We ourselves didn't understand what buttons were being pushed about an episode dealing with adoption. And that was our mistake. None of the kids were adopted. We didn't know anybody who had been adopted. That was really us just not being cognizant to the world of adoption. And so that was a bad show. That was just not being respectful. I think it only ever aired once. Maybe. There's actually some contention as to how many times the adoption episode did air. I've seen some sources say just the once, while others have said it aired at least twice, but I haven't been able to independently confirm it one way or the other. In fact, I'm not 100% sure the episode was even officially banned. It might just have fallen through the cracks. The adoption episode premiered in the cusp of a major creative shift for You Can't Do That on Television. Christine McLaid, the show's breakout child star, had left the show the previous year, and season 8 was truncated, with only 5 episodes filmed before the show would go on a break for the 1988 season, airing nothing but reruns. When You Can't Do That on Television came back in 1989, almost the entire cast had been replaced with new kids. But this failed to spark enough interest enough in the program, which would end production for good in 1990. 1987 was getting to the point where Nickelodeon didn't really need You Can't Do That on Television anymore. It was no longer the highest rated show on the channel, and with the overwhelming success of Double Dare in 1986, Nick was becoming lucrative enough to invest in their own new programming, with hints of some new studio space in Orlando, Florida. Despite its subversive qualities and Nick using green slime to this day, You Can't Do That on Television was still a show from the Silver Ball era of Nickelodeon. So in all of that, who knows where the adoption episode ended up? Maybe it did get a big Do Not Air sticker stamped onto it after a while. Maybe it just got lost in the bottom of the pile. All I know is that this was not the most well-conceived episode ever, and there are larger conversations to be had about responsibility with comedy. But that's for a larger video. This was just a sample.